Okay, so maybe you have an app like an AI app that uses OpenAI and you want to charge your users by credit rather than just a monthly fee that that uh, can be used unlimited. So maybe the value is in single actions like a calls to OpenAI. So in this example, we're going to create an app that uh, gives users 10 credits every month. And when those credits are up, they can no longer use the app unless they were to purchase more. Okay, let's see the app in action. We've used a bunch of credits here. I'm going to click the button a couple more times. So I use up all my credits for the month. Here we go, I've got one credit left. Now clicking this means the button no longer does anything. I'm told I don't have any credits left to use. And now I can't do anything until my subscription renews. So we will just quickly simulate that by cancelling my subscription and starting a new one uh, for in a couple of days time. Just a little trick to force the app to update. So it's now going to give me 10 credits again. Now I've got credits I can use. Okay, let's look at how to build this app. It's fairly straightforward. First, most important thing is you need to have the Stripe recurring billing with Pricewell plugin. Um, after that, you need to follow the setup instructions to set everything up and then let's have a look at my data structure. So I've got the users table and I've got companies here so the subscription is paid by a company and a company can have multiple users. You can do it this way or you can just attach everything to the user object and have users pay a subscription for themselves. That's completely up to you. Wherever you put the subscription data that's uh, where all these fields will go. Uh, follow our other videos for that instructions on how to do that. And now under company, I've just added a credits field here. It could go anywhere you want. You could add a new table for credits if you like. So we've got credits. Uh, it's a number. I've just given default 10. So when a new company is created, they get 10 credits automatically. So that like 10 free credits for creating an account. And that is the only data that I need to add here. So let's go over to our little credit page here. I'm going to pop some data in here. So the placeholder is loading. The actual content will be the current users company's credits. That's the number of credits the company has. And then when you click the button, we're going to do something. So normally you would have some, some kind of form or action thing that you can do, which is like costs, maybe it costs you money, like calling OpenAI, or maybe it's just the thing that provides value to your users, like sending an invoice or filling out a form. Here we're just clicking a button, but so when we need to uh, apply a credit, we're going to make a change to a thing. The thing we're going to change is the current user's company. And what we're going to change is their credits. We're going to make it this company's credits minus one. So credits, credits is equal to credits minus one. But so that we don't go below zero, only when the company's credit is greater than one. Greater than zero. So they've got more than zero credits, then we take one away. And here you would normally do your valuable action as well. 
So that's very easy, we can try that out over here. Going into the preview. The company's got nine credits, let's use one. Um, so now that credits can be removed, let's reset the credits to 10 when the company's subscription renews. So quickly pull up price well here. We've got um, the price well bubble integration installed. You can see that uh, price well is automatically updating my bubble database whenever subscription is deleted, created or renewed. So we can use that fact to also update our credits back to 10 whenever the subscription is changed. We're going to hit to create a back-end workflow. So we go into back-end workflows here. Create a back-end work ba workflow based on a database trigger. We're going to call it renew credits. type that we're going to rely on is company. So whenever the company data changes, we're going to do something. We're going to say only when, so when this database triggers, you get a before and an after version of the company. So only when the company befores Stripe subscription period end, formatted as a date, in, let's do UTC to fix the time zone, is not the same as the current company now's, current company's period end for the state state. When, there's, when this is subscription period end changes, so that it changes at the end of the month, we can also say and the subscription period end is not empty. So just in case we remove it when a company uh, cancels, then when the subscription period end changes, and we're going to give you new credits. So let's do the give you new credits part. Data, make changes to a thing. I'm going to change the company. And we're going to make change to the credits. I'm going to make them. Let's simulate that process again. Cancel, cancel the subscription. Create a new one. Starts in a couple of days. It's in the f after the one that we had before. So let's say the twentieth. And now we have 10 credits again.